The very last thing that we learned was how to compute the derivative using the definition. And now we're going to actually apply that in several different instances. So this section is over applications of the derivative. So let's jump right into a word problem. All right, we can see that I have lots of parts to this word problem. Let's just start with reading the problem itself. Experiments indicate that when a flea jumps, its height in meters after t seconds is given by this function, h of t equals 4.4t minus 4.9t squared. Now, we want to do lots of things with this. Let me just run through those very quickly. We want to sketch a graph of the function. We want to see how high is that flea after a quarter of a second. We want to see the average velocity um, between the first one-half seconds of the jump. We want to compute the instantaneous velocity of the flea after one second. Um, we want to figure out when our derivative is equal to zero. And we want to figure out when does the flea land or return to its initial height. So lots of things here. I'm going to work through these steps um, part by part. But before I do that, I suggest that you pause the video and see which parts of these you can work on your own. Ideally, you should be able to do all of them on your own because we have covered all of this material before. So this is just, again, a review or, of course, an application of the material that we've learned previously. Okay, the very first thing that we want to do is we want to sketch the graph of h of t. So again, our function is 4.4t minus 4.9t squared. Hopefully you already have a visual of this because this is material that you've learned back in college algebra and reviewed so far this semester. So we need to know what degree this equation is. The highest exponent that we see here is 2. So this is a degree 2 equation. And hopefully you recall that that is a quadratic equation. Specifically, the graph is a parabola. The other thing that we care about is which direction the parabola opens. So since my leading term is negative, that tells us that this parabola is opening down. So a rough visual of this graph is a parabola opening down. Okay, now if we want to graph this, we can do a lot of these steps by hand. In fact, you should be able to graph this entirely by hand. So when we graph things, we like to look at intercepts first. So the easiest thing to compute is our y-intercept, and we do that by substituting in 0 for x, or in this case, 0 for t, because our variable is t. So we want to figure out what h of 0 is. When we plug that in, we get 4.4 times 0 minus 4.9 times 0 squared. So that means we get 0. So that tells us on our graph we have an ordered pair of 0, 0. If we want to figure out the x-intercepts, there should be two of them because it's degree 2, we set our y variable or we set our function 4.4t minus 4.9 t squared, we set it equal to 0. This is a degree 2. We have a common factor of t, so I'm going to solve it using the factoring method. Factor out t gives me 4.4 minus 4.9t. Set each of those equal to 0. The first part gives us t equals 0. The second one, if I set it equal to 0, I get 4.4 equals 4.9t. I move my 4.9 to the other side. Divide by 4.9. It does not come out evenly, so let me just round it to three decimal places. T equals 0 0.898. So if I put these in intercept format, the first one, of course, is the origin, and the second one is 0 0.8980. Um, the other very important detail on a parabola is the vertex. So we want to know what this point is up here. So we can compute that by doing the vertex formula. Um, the formula is negative b over 2a. That gives us our first coordinate, the x-coordinate. 
And our second one, we substitute back into our function. So h of negative b over 2a. So if I were to write this in descending order, negative 4.9t squared plus 4.4t, I figure out that my b is this 4.4, and I figure out my a is this negative 4.9. So my first coordinate, negative b over 2a, gives me negative 4.4 over 2 times negative 4.9. Now my negatives cancel out, so I get positive 4.4 over 9.8, and if I simplify that, that is approximately 0.449. Now that gives me the x coordinate on my graph. If I want to figure out my y coordinate, I take that and I substitute it back into my equation, h of 0.449. And you can round it to whatever decimal place you think is appropriate. I just chose 3 here. So if you did something a little more or a little less, that most likely would be okay as well. So we're doing approximations here because these are decimals. So I'm just going to do this in one big swoop and do all these calculations at once. And I find that my answer gives me 0.988 if I were to round it to three decimal places. So my vertex is 0.449 and 0.988. And that is approximately because I did do some rounding there. So I have my most important points. I have my shape of my graph. So all I need to do now is sketch the actual graph of this. So when I sketch the graph of this, I have to be really cognizant of where my actual points are. I have a point at the origin, but my other points are at point 0.9 and point 0.5 and point 0.9, if I were just to round it to one decimal place. So I wouldn't want to do my scale by tens like we normally do on the standard window. We want to do it by, um, by tenths of a unit. Okay? So when I do my tick marks this way, I'm doing it by tenths of a unit. So this is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this would actually represent a whole unit there. And I would do the same thing on this axis here. They don't have to match my scale, but I think it's best to match it here. So 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which means this represents a whole unit here, and my middle mark means a half a unit. So let me draw these points. I have a point at 0, 0. I have a, another x-intercept at almost 0.9 right here, and my vertex was at 0.449, so really close to 0.5, and then at 0.998, so up here at 0.1. And I apologize for the overlap between my vertex, my math here, and my actual graph. Now, I know this is a parabola opening down, so it's going to look something like this. Now, if you don't trust yourself, you are always more than welcome to graph this using the graphing calculator. Just note that you have to adjust the window so it matches with this here. And um, let's go ahead and actually do that at this time. Okay, so I have my equation plugged into my y equals here. The only difference was my equation used t's, and I have to use x's instead on my calculator. Now, just like I said before, if we graphed this on the standard window zoom 6, we probably wouldn't get a whole lot of detail because we know most of our points are within the vicinity of 1 around here. So what we want to do is we want to zoom in on this, or maybe we want to manually change the window, or something like that, just so we see a clearer picture of this graph. So let me go ahead and manually change my window, because I already graphed it by hand, and I knew what a good scale would be. So I'm doing it by ones, where my scale goes by tenths, or point one. And I'm going to do the exact same thing in my y-axis. So from negative one to one, where my scale is by tenths of a unit, or by point one. So now when I graph this, I should get the exact same image that we graphed by hand. 
And you can see that we have that here. The only clarification that I want to make on this graph, whether we look at it from the calculator or whether we look at it by hand down here, is that typically we graph things using the x and the y axis. And that's fine for graphing it. But now we actually have a word application here. And notice in this word application, none of our variables consisted of x and y. Our variables consisted of t, that's our input, and h of t, that's our output. So instead of me labeling this as x and y, my x-axis should be labeled as my t-coordinate, and my y-axis should be labeled as my h of t-coordinate. And we should keep those things in mind when we go to do the other applications of this problem here. We're going to interpret it in t and h of t. And again, if we look back to this problem, we should see that T stands for time in seconds, and our H of T stands for the height in meters. So those are things to keep in mind when we do the rest of this problem.